Good day, and welcome to another episode of Going Solo. I'm Jim Whitaker. We're coming at you from outside today because I felt like it. Well, that and it finally decided to be April today and not January. So in the last episode, the main rift of the song was established as well as the chorus, and it goes a little something like this. been looking forward to this episode because this is when the real work begins and the project really begins to take shape. But first, a very quick and basic history lesson for anyone who isn't familiar with the way modern music is recorded. looper pedal. I've used that in a bunch of past videos, including one where I played an entire song live by playing one instrument at a time, adding each new instrument to the loop. The pedal records what you play and then plays it back forever until you stop it. You can then record more parts on top and keep adding things to the loop. It's a fantastic practice tool and it's a great effect when used live, and this is a good example of a modern sound on sound. Before all of this modern technology, though, you had one shot at the recording process, and the group of musicians used to have to sit there and perform the song together in front of the recording device. That was, of course, until Les Paul. Not the guitar, the legendary guitarist the guitar was named for. He was a pioneer of what they called sound on sound, first with record-cutting machines, but later on with tape machines. A tape machine has three heads, an erase head, a record head, and a playback head. It erases the tape as it's recording new audio. However, Les figured out that if you add a fourth head, another playback head, before the other three, you can actually catch the audio coming around, mix it with what you're currently playing, and then it'll hit the record head, giving you layers of sound on sound. But you had to be careful, because any mistakes you make ruin the entire recording, and you'd have to start all over. In the 1950s, however, multi-track tape machines were invented that allowed for recording of many different tracks of audio, and you could manipulate, edit, delete, re-record them all separately of each other, allowing for more studio trickery, and smaller groups of musicians could sound like much larger groups of musicians through layering of sounds. If you remember cassette tapes, they're multi-track tapes too. They're four-track tapes. They have stereo left and right on two different sides, and you can erase or re-record one side of the tape without affecting the other side. And if you remember these legends, four different programs times two tracks, stereo left and right, equals, you guessed it, eight tracks. Mm. Now we have digital, which mimics the workflow of analog tape, but now with a seemingly unlimited number of tracks and effects you can use. There's many programs that can accomplish this, but my favorite has always been Apple's Logic Pro. It's very powerful, I've been using it for years, and it's in use in a lot of recording studios around the world. What you see here is the actual project for the song came to play. With effects and audio tracks combined, it is a 66-track song. So let's get a project started, and the first thing I want to do in this new project is figure out a good tempo for this song. I'm using a metronome app on my phone specifically for its tap function. Usually I'll play around with some of the parts of the song on a guitar, and then I'll use the tap button on the metronome app to kind of dial in a ballpark tempo of the song. In this case, I was hovering around 105 beats a minute. But once the project gets started in Logic, sometimes the tempo doesn't feel right, it needs to be a little faster or slower. In this case, I ultimately tweaked it to 107 beats a minute for this song. The time signature for this song is 4-4, which is a gold standard for most popular Western music. song is in the key of C. Now it's time to record something to get this whole project rolling. I'm going to open a new track and this will be the basic guitar track to guide everything. 
Once this track's finished, the next thing I'm going to do is start a drummer track. Logic Pro has an artificial intelligence drummer with many programmable features and styles. Remember, I don't have anyone to jam with in this instance. I'm doing all this by myself, so I need something to start with. I'm going to have that virtual drummer keep looping longer than the song will be. On purpose, I can trim it a little later. When I already have a good idea of how the song structure is going to be, this part actually goes really fast. I just recorded a simple introduction to the song, and I'm going to use Logic's arrangement track to help organize all of these sections. I came up with the verse to this song a few days ago, and I'm going to add the first verse right here. This is very simplified playing. There's really no point in wasting the time or effort and making it the least bit fancy because it's only a placeholder. The real parts are going to replace those parts once the real version is recorded over the demo. You'll see what I mean by that later. Here's the chorus. And believe it or not, this phase is almost already finished. This song, like most popular Western music, is made up of sections like verses and choruses that are repeated. So the beauty of this arrangement track is being able to click and drag the sections around to easily rearrange the song. But for me, the savior is also being able to copy and paste sections. Once I get a couple of sections completed, I can copy and paste them to repeat them again to very quickly complete the song structure, as I have done right here. The only thing missing is a little outro that I have written and will record right now. So here's what we have so far, the full song structure played on an acoustic. Now up to this point, you've heard bits and pieces of the entire song on this acoustic guitar, but a word about the following episodes. From now on, we're going to focus on a small part of the song, both for familiarity reasons so that you can keep track of what it sounds like from start to finish, but also because this song will be released as a single after the completion of this vlog, and I don't want to spoil the whole song before then. Actually, just between you and me. It won't actually be copyrighted until it's officially released either, so that's definitely another reason not to reveal the whole thing yet. As always, I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time, where we're going to record the full demo on Going Solo.